solve equations. There are a couple of things that you should be thinking about when you're solving equations. Where is the variable? What is being done to the variable? How can I undo that? You need to apply to both sides of the equation. Whatever I do to the left side of the equation, I need to do the same thing to the right side of the equation. We are going to start with one-step equations. Adding and subtracting. Example 1, y plus 3 equals 10. Where is the variable? Here's the variable. What is being done to the variable? y is being added by 3. How can I undo that? I can undo that with the opposite of adding 3. That would be subtracting 3, and I need to do it to both sides of the equation. So if I subtract 3 from the left, I need to subtract 3 from the right side of the equation. Here's the equal sign. It says that your equations are balanced, and so to keep it balanced, you need to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. A positive 3 and a negative 3 cancel. Bring down your y, bring down your equal sign, and then do what the other side says. 10 subtracting 3 is 7. We can always check our algebra solutions. Start by writing down the original problem. We know what y is. It's not unknown anymore. I'm going to substitute in 7 for the y value. Continue to simplify. We get 10 equals 10, and that is a true solution. If I had something like 9 equals 10, well, that is not a true solution. I would want to go back and check my work if I don't get a true solution. Example 2. Where's the variable? This time it's on the right-hand side of the equation. What's being done to the variable? Y is being subtracted by 7, and I can undo that by adding 7 to both sides of the equation. Here's my equal sign. I am adding 7 to both sides of the equation. Negative 7 and positive 7 cancel, and I have Y. Bring down my equal sign. Negative 2 plus 7. Or I can say 7 subtracting 2. Again, we're going to check our solution. Negative 2 equals y plus 7. Start by writing down the original. y is not unknown anymore. We think we found out that y equals 5, so we're going to check that solution. And I'm going to substitute in 5 for the y value and write down everything else. I need to simplify 5 plus 7. And I was not going to get a true solution. This would say negative 2 equals 12. I noticed that I didn't copy down the equation correctly. It should be y minus 7. y minus 7 equals negative 2. Okay, y equals 5. Now we have 5 minus 7. Negative 2 equals negative 2. Check. Now we're going to move on to multiplying and dividing. Here I have an equation on example 3. Negative 8x equals 56. My variable is here on the left. What is being done to the variable? x is being multiplied by negative 8. The opposite of multiplying negative 8 would be to divide by negative 8. And I would do that to both sides of the equation. Negative 8 divided by negative 8 is a positive 1x equals 56 divided by negative 8 is negative 7. What I have here then is x equals negative 7. We know that we don't have to have the 1 in front of x. It's understood to be there. We can check our solution to make sure that our answer is correct, but I don't make you check every single solution. We will check example 4. On example 4, here's my variable, a, and what is being done to the variable? a is being divided by 5. The opposite of dividing 5 would be to multiply by 5 to both sides of the equation. Here, if I make 5 a fraction, I can see that my 5 in the numerator and 5 in the denominator will cross-cancel. 
five divided by five is one, five divided by five is one. And when I multiply straight across, I get one A, one times A is one A over one times one equals negative 12 times five is negative 60. And here I know that I don't have to have the one in the denominator and I don't have to have the one in front of the A. This is just A, negative 60. Let's check our solution. Start by writing down the original. We have A divided by five equals negative 12. We think that we know that A is negative 60, so we're gonna substitute that in for A. Negative 60 divided by five, does that equal negative 12? Negative 60 divided by five is negative 12. I got the same solution on both sides of the equation. Check. On example five, I see that my variable is being multiplied by negative three fifths. When I see a fraction being multiplied to my variable, I like to use the reciprocal. The reciprocal means to flip and multiply. Flip and multiply. I am going to multiply. I put the parentheses around it because of that negative sign. I'm going to multiply by negative 5 thirds. And whatever I do to one side of the equation, I've got to do the same thing to the other side of the equation. A negative times a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. That's good. We need a positive variable. And then we have our fives in the numerator and denominator are going to cross cancel. Five divided by five is one. Five divided by five is one. And that also happens with our threes. Three divided by three is one. Three divided by three is one. And I get a positive T. One times one T is T. One times one is one. And I know I don't need to put it over one. Now I need to multiply six times negative five thirds. I start by making my fraction six over one. I'm multiplying fractions, so I'm looking for any cross canceling to simplify down. One and negative five, all they have in common is a one. But here I see six and three have a common factor. I can divide by three. Three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. And now I'm ready to multiply straight across. Two times negative five is negative 10, and then one times one is one. I don't need to put it over one. T equals negative 10. And again, you could check your solution if you want to see if you were correct. Next, we have one-step equations with fractions and decimals. What, here's my variable P, and I see that P is being added by a positive 9.4. Out front, it's a positive. So I know to undo a positive 9.4, I would subtract 9.4, subtract 9.4, positive 9.4 and negative 9.4 will cancel. And then I need to look and see what's happening on the other side of the equation. It says 4.8 minus 9.4, four and eight tenths subtracting nine and four tenths. If I look at just the whole numbers, it says four subtracting nine. These are unlike signs, and I know I need to subtract them. The 9 needs to be on top. The 9 is the bigger number. I need to reverse the order here and do negative 9.4, and I have a positive 4.8. These are different signs. I need to subtract them. 4 subtract 8. I cannot do that, so I'm going to borrow from the 9, and that becomes an 8. And then I'm going to add 10 to the 4, and I get 14. 14 subtracting 8 is 6. Bring down my decimal, and 8 subtract 4 is 4. When it's different signs, we subtract and then take the sign from the larger absolute value. That would be negative 9. My final answer is negative 4.6. We get that P equals negative 4 and 6 tenths.
example seven. I see that my variable y is here on the left, and I can still use the reciprocal here. What's the number that's in front of y? It's understood to have a one. And the reciprocal of one fifth, I would just flip it, five over one. The goal here is to get y by itself. My fives are gonna cancel, leaving a positive one y. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I've got to do the same thing to the other side of the equation. Our fives cancel, numerator to denominator, leaving a one y. And then I look to see two fifths times five. Again, I can see that my fives are going to cancel, numerator to denominator. Five divided by five is one. Five divided by five is one. And now I'm ready to multiply straight across. Two times one is two. One times one is one. And I know that I would not leave my answer as two over one. My final answer is y equals two. Example eight, I see that A is being subtracted by three sevenths. The opposite of subtracting three sevenths is to add three sevenths. Add three sevenths to the other side of the equation. My negative three sevenths and positive three sevenths cancel. And then I need to do the math on the right side. I'm adding fractions. What is the rule for adding fractions? I need a common denominator. And I see here that I already have that common denominator. All I need to do is add it up. Two sevenths plus three sevenths is five sevenths. On example nine, we have a complex fraction. We have a fraction that's within a fraction. Here's my variable z, and I need to ask myself, what is being done to z? z is being divided by a fraction. The opposite of dividing by a fraction would be to multiply by that fraction. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I need to do the same thing to the other side. Here, the, a fraction of 1 and 2 ninths in the numerator, I can put that over 1, and a fraction of 1 and 2 ninths in the denominator, those are going to cancel, leaving z equals 27 times 1 and 2 ninths. How do I multiply fractions that have a mixed number? I need to change my mixed number into an improper fraction. We have 27, and I'm going to make that a fraction at the same time. And then changing 1 and 2 ninths to an improper fraction, we have 9 times 1 is 9, plus 2 is 11 ninths. Now I'm ready to multiply my fractions. I'm looking for any cross-canceling. I see that 27 and 9 have a common factor of 9. 9 divided by 9 is 1. 27 divided by 9 is 3. And now I'm ready to multiply straight across. 3 times 11 is 33. 1 times 1 is 1. My final answer is z equals 33. The last thing that we have is proportions. We want to be reminded of how to solve proportions. When I have a ratio that equals a ratio, we cross multiply. 7 times x is 7x. 2 times 10 is 20. That equals 20. And we have a one-step equation. X is being multiplied by 7, and the opposite of multiplying by 7 would be to divide by 7 to both sides of the equation. 7 divided by 7 cancels, and I'm left with X equals 27. Remember that we always check a common factor of 2, 3, and 5. These are not both even. 3 does not work for either one of these, and 5 only works for the numerator. Therefore, my final answer is x equals 20 seconds.